I've either gone completely insane, or I'm the only one here with a fragment of sanity left. Why doesn't anyone else here notice what's happening? God damn it. He's starting up about globalization again. What the fuck is going on here? I look pleadingly to Chris and Kate, but they seem to notice neither my alarm, nor anything else out of the ordinary, and continue to hush the conversation we've been having on the floor, in our dark corner of the room. I think about getting up and walking out, but what bothers me most is my apathy towards that idea. Instead, I feel sick, loathing curiosity and attachment to what I'm witnessing. Normally, using a phone in a darkened room while someone is speaking would be frowned upon, but no one here seems to notice, or maybe they don't care, or maybe I don't care if they care. Wait, that could make a difference. Which one is it? Shit. Either way, I'm free to type out what I'm seeing, in hopes that someone else knows what's happening here. I told myself that I'm typing this out with some glimmer of hope that someone might know what's going on here, but I think the real reason is just so there's some record of my memory out there in case I forget. I was brought up by a Christian family. My parents weren't overbearingly religious, at least not to my understanding. They weren't hateful of the LBGT community, nor did they shun those who didn't share their beliefs. To the contrary, my mom and dad were probably the kindest, most giving people I ever knew. They were a bit stricter than most of my friends' parents, who were also Christian, especially when it came to their rules about what media they allowed in the house. But they didn't have any real conflict about this until I reached my teen years. You know that old cliche where the mom finds her son's porno hidden under the mattress? That was essentially what happened to me. Except instead of porno, it was a Nine Inch Nails album. My upbringing was what you would expect from an actively Christian family. I had a little brother, Nick, and we got along really well. Mostly keeping ourselves entertained by playing in the woods outside our house. We were both homeschooled and went to church every Sunday. Aside from that, I was a member of the Boy Scouts, and I participated in an international youth group that had a club at our church on Wednesday nights. My childhood was predictable, but I enjoyed it. It was perfectly typical, though I suppose I don't have an accurate sense of what could be considered normal in any of these things I just mentioned. All I have is my own experience to base it off of, and the fact that I'm able to maintain apparently acceptable social interactions with my peers. If you think about it that way, I guess anyone should feel hesitant to use the word normal when everyone has a different idea on what that means. Participation shapes your reality more than anything else. The youth group I mentioned before was one of the highlights of my week. All of my friends from church also attended, and since I didn't attend a public school, the added social interaction was welcome. I'm sure my parents didn't mind getting Nick and I out of the house for the night either. I did really well in this group. I could memorize all of the Bible verses with little to no difficulty. I was a pretty fast runner, so I did well in game time, and I was an altogether well-behaved kid, much to the relief of the adult leaders, who too often had to deal with children much more difficult than me and my small group of friends. My brother eventually quit coming, and my friends and I kept attending all the way into high school. By the time I was in my mid-teens, my doubts about the legitimacy of the Christian faith began to grow. But I enjoyed myself there nonetheless, and my friends were going, so I stuck with it. Besides, you had to participate to attend the week-long summer camp, which was filled with hundreds of camp members from throughout the region, and was also a memorable, enjoyable event. Another yearly occasion this youth club held was a club conference, where members across the region would gather to meet and separate into scheduled workshops taught by various speakers the organization had hired. Once you reached a high school level, you were required to attend this conference in order to finish a workbook for the year. If you didn't finish your workbook, you couldn't go to summer camp, so most of us made sure to be there. Not that we particularly minded going either. It was nice to be able to spend time with friends we made at camp, and some of the speakers were pretty entertaining as well. Most of us probably wouldn't have gone whether they were required it or not. I was pretty excited for the conference today. 
Not only did I get the opportunity to see a lot of old friends, but I also had been keeping correspondence with Kate, a girl I met at camp who I had hit it off with pretty well, and we were planning on meeting up today. When I got to the church, it was being held in this morning. I picked up my packet including my name tag and my program listing of all the different workshops. They were serving free donuts and coffee, so I helped myself to some as I scanned the sizable crowd to find my friends and Kate. I chatted with a couple acquaintances I had shared cabins with at camp, and a few leaders as well, but I didn't see anyone I knew until everyone was heading to the main sanctuary for the opening ceremonies. I was hailed from behind, and I turned around and saw Zach, a friend I had made the previous summer at camp. When we first met, he hated me until he discovered we both shared a love for the mid-2000s alternative rock bands, and from that point on, he decided I was his best friend. He was pretty weird, but cool to hang out with. I returned his greeting and asked him if he was with anyone else. He replied by muttering something about hating most of the people here. I laughed it off, and we decided to hang out for a while as we headed into the sanctuary for the opening. I craned my head to look for Kate, but I wasn't able to see her. So we sat down as the woman at the podium began talking to bring the room into order. It was pretty boring, really. Just some singing, a few raffle prizes, and one of the main leaders of the whole organization got up to talk for a bit. He seemed to drag on a bit, and I thought I noticed him restating some of the points a couple times, but it ended before too long, and soon we were heading to our first workshop. We decided on the one taught by Seth, the speaker from summer camp who was known for his sense of humor. He was doing a bit on secular music. I didn't pay much attention to it but I felt as if it wasn't quite as preachy as I expected. Nevertheless, that didn't stop Zach from complaining that Seth wasn't nearly as funny as people made him out to be, while showing me the music videos he ripped from YouTube to his iPod. Once concluded, we walked towards the door trying to decide on our next workshop when my friend Chris walked through the door. Chris was one of my closer friends I made at camp. We spent hours playing games on our deck in the past years, and we had a few shared interests. We hugged and greeted each other warmly, and after reacquainting with each other, Chris told me he was attending Seth's next workshop about making audiences laugh, and I decided to join him. I invited Zach to join us, but he looked at me solemnly, shook his head, and walked off saying something about having to go somewhere else. I guess Chris was one of those people here he hated. I didn't worry about it too much, though and we went back into the room to find our seats. Chris wasn't as distracting as Zach, so I was able to pay more attention to the message. I was moderately enjoying myself, and even caught myself laughing at his jokes a few times, but was taken back at a one-liner he used halfway through the workshop. I could have sworn he had used those exact same words a few minutes ago, but everyone was laughing like it was the first time they had ever heard it. I wondered if maybe I was just having some weird form of deja vu, I had previously listened to a CD filled with his messages, so maybe I had heard that joke before on that, and my mind was just playing tricks on me through it. It slipped my mind after a few minutes though, and soon enough it was over, and time for our lunch break. I finally found Kate in the lunchroom. We saw each other from across the room, and she ran towards me and hugged me, holding me for a long time. She explained that her parents got into a big fight right before they were supposed to leave, and that's why she was late. I nodded sympathetically, and the three of us got in line for our lunches. Once we received our food, Chris said he was going to go check on some of his other friends, and that he'd be back. So Kate and I headed towards her group of friends. We ate our lunch while we caught up on each other's lives, making small talk with our friends as well. A few times during our lunch, friends from camp would approach me and saying it's good to finally see me again. The strange thing about this is that I'm sure a couple of them approached me with the same greeting more than once, but I was too focused on Katie to take too much notice of this, and chalked it up to them forgetting they had already talked to me due to the chaos of seeing so many friends again. One of Kate's friends said something about us being really cute. She blushed and I laughed awkwardly. We looked at the time. We saw we only had a few minutes before the next workshop. We hurriedly finished our sandwiches, said our farewells to her friends and made our way to the doors towards the workshop classrooms. Chris rejoined us in the hall. The three of us looked over our programs to decide our third workshop. Kate suggested some political-sounding lesson, 
from some doctor guy. I forgot his name. We all agreed that it sounded pretty entertaining, so we headed for the designated classroom. Once we arrived, we chose a spot in the corner against the wall where we could interact without drawing too much attention. When everyone had taken their seats, the lights were put out so the speaker could use the projector. The good doctor began his spiel. As soon as he began talking, I knew this was going to be a very long hour. His voice was gruff, grady, and nearly unlistenable, and he was clearly going to spend his time discussing his own personal conspiracy theories and ranting about how the Democrats hate America. Fantastic. We are stuck with Dr. Red Pill. It was equal parts fascinating and hilarious. Chris, Kate, and I had quite a good time mocking nearly everything that came out of his mouth. We could barely contain ourselves when he started listing off speculations about drugs. Drugs only affect you by allowing demons to temporarily possess you, he said. That with way more conviction than a sentence like that deserved. I couldn't keep myself from letting out a restrained chorkle at that. This guy was more than red-pilled. He was legitimately insane. I sat back to enjoy the rape of human intellect taking place for a while, groaning and chuckling at nearly every statement. But, eventually... I felt once again I just heard all of what he was saying. It seems like he was repeating himself word for word in some instances. Drugs only affect you by allowing demons to temporarily possess you. This fully caught my attention. I turned to Chris and Kate who were trying to control their laughter the same as the first time we heard. I asked them why he kept saying the exact same things, and to my alarmed surprise, they just gave me this confused look, as if they had no idea what I was talking about. I didn't just imagine this. He was still proceeding with the same points he had already made. I looked frantically towards the other people, hoping that somebody, anybody, had noticed what was going on. They all gazed at the speaker either attentively or bemusedly. Not a single one of them gave a sign of noticing what was going on. Drugs only affect you by allowing demons to temporarily possess you. I started to panic. Typing this out has given me time to calm down a bit and assess my situation, but I still have no idea what is happening. So can someone please tell me what the hell is going on? It's not like I'm stuck in an infinite loop. The actions of the audience have varied over the past representations. Different people have gotten up to use the restroom, and Chris and Kate have maintained a disjointed but not representative conversation through the majority of the time here, making occasional comments at the remarks of the speaker that have often have slight differences from the last. It's as if everyone except me keeps forgetting everything that happened before. I checked the time. We were supposed to be out of here two hours ago, but I'm sure no one else has noticed. How do people not get sick of listening to his granting voice say the same thing over and over again? Fucking Christ, what the fuck is going on? Why won't it stop? In a last ditch attempt to appeal sanity, I raised my voice to interrupt the speaker and ask him why he won't stop repeating himself. For an instant, my surroundings flicker, and in a moment I see another room, with my family, except. Before I have time to think about this, Dr. Red Pill scuffs and looks at me in bewilderment, as if he has no idea what I was referring to, and then continues with his monologue. Drugs only affect you by allowing demons to temporarily possess you. I've had enough of this. I abruptly head to the door, and walk out as fast as I can to the bathroom nearly breaking into a run on my way there. Once there, I head to the sink and splash cold water in my face and look up in the mirror. And I realize I need to get back to my workshop. I don't want to miss anything this guy has to say. Everything that passes through his lips is comedy gold. I get back to where Chris and Kate were seated and get comfortable beside them once more. They welcome me back between giggles and we start talking about the school play Kate is working on. Eventually, I begin to pay attention to the speaker once again, and as I do, a familiar sense of dread begins to crawl up my back. Drugs only affect you by allowing demons to temporarily possess you. Horror and confusion rack my brain. What happened in the bathroom? Am I becoming like everyone else here? Drugs only affect you by allowing demons to temporarily possess you. Drugs only affect you by allowing demons to temporarily possess you. Drugs only affect drugs only. Affect drugs only. Why won't you shut up? Shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up! I realize I'm screaming now, and everyone in the room stops and turns around to gawk at me indiscriminately. I sit under the silence for a moment, get up and rush towards the speaker. 
decking him in the face as gasps and commotion wrap behind me. I run towards the door. I sprint down the hall towards the exit. Right when I reach the door, my ears are filled with intense ringing, which gives away to screaming, but not my own. I collapse to my knees as my mind is filled with mental images that I am barely able to make out, but seem familiar somehow. I struggle to grasp the fragments in my mind, to piece them together and make sense of them. I am able to pull a few out of the torrent, shit-stained carpets, the flash of a knife, and the fucking screaming all complete for attention when one prevailing thought breaks through. If I don't remember it, it didn't happen. All the noises and images slowly start to dissipate and fade away as I stop trying to hold on to them. How long have I been gone? What was I doing kneeling in front of the door? I shake my head and walk back to my friends in our workshop. I open the door and Chris and Kate motion me to sit next to them. I take my spot and look at the doctor. Where did he get such a bad black eye? Oh well, it doesn't matter. I rejoin my friends in conversation in our dark corner of the room. Chortling as the speaker says something about how drugs cause you to be possessed by demons. This guy is great. You should come over here to check it out. You have to see it to believe it. I get the nagging feeling I may have said something negative about this before. If so, ignore that. Everything here is perfectly normal.